Hey guys, let's get right into it. So Jenny and Samit. Jenny's daughter and her wife are leaving her. When her daughter gives her mother her last hug, she's absolutely distraught. She starts breaking down and crying and she's just like, I, when I leave, I can't come back right away. And I'm very concerned for you because I don't wanna leave you here for two months. And Jenny is trying to assure her that everything is okay, but I feel like the daughter knows that something is not right. She sat down with Samit and he was being very vague with everything, essentially letting her know that he's always gonna side with his family. Her mother came out there to be with him. So she's very concerned that the man that she came out there to live with the rest of her life with in India is saying that if his parents do not approve of her, he doesn't want her, or that he can't be with her. So Jenny's daughter is just like, I'm scared. Like, I don't wanna leave my mom here. And I feel very bad for her because Jenny is her mother. She's not her child. So there's nothing that she can do. Her mother is an adult. This is what her mom wants to do. And when you're the child, you can't chastise your parent. You can't put your foot down. You can't make them do something that they don't want because there's this respect dynamic that you have with your parent. So you only talk to them a certain way. You can only say but so much to them. So she's essentially watching her mother make a very dangerous and dumb decision. And there's nothing that she could do but love and support her through it. But she's scared. I would be too, guys. Could you imagine your mother telling you that she's moving to a foreign country that is very financially difficult for any of you guys to get to? So you don't know if you'll ever see her. She's moving there with a man who was very vague about his intentions with her. Wouldn't you be terrified and scared for your parent and stressing out every damn day because you're waiting for somebody, the embassy, to give you a call that something happened to your mother? She hugged her mother and her body was shaking because she is very afraid for her mom. I just felt so bad. I was like, Jenny, why would you do this? You got this whole family stressing and crying over you and you're the matriarch of the family. Ma'am, tighten up and get in position. You should be giving your kids and grandkids advice as you're settling into your golden years, living your best life. You're some 23 year old international student who fell in love with a dude that you met while you were in your travels in Italy. And now you're just living this eat, pray, love life. Ma'am, not at 63. You got to get it together, sis. You got to get it together because I felt for her daughter. I felt for, I knew exactly what she was going through. She's the child, but she has a parent that she has to parent. But you can only parent your parent so Until much. Until they say, I'm the parent. You're not going to tell me what to do. And then case closed. Case closed. There's nothing you can do after that. Oh gosh, but she hugged her mom and her body was shaking and the tears could not stop coming out of her eyes. Even when she was doing her confessional, she was still breaking down. Jenny, oh goodness, how did you not know this was a dumb decision? You know what? I'm not going. I'm not going to pile on Jenny. Here is why: Samit had me too. Did he have us all fooled? Didn't he have us all fooled until he disappeared for two weeks? We knew something was up. The ring ceremony that Samit told Jenny's daughter that they're planning on doing. He lets Jenny know that the ring ceremony is canceled because he doesn't think that his parents will approve of it. Jenny, rightfully so, is pissed off and starts cussing out Samit. And she's just like, we gotta stop this back and forth with the parents. I'm out here. We have talked, we have planned, I've sold everything. I moved out here to be with you. So we have to stop with the going back and forth with the parents and they won't approve it. Fine, we are grown adults. We're still going to do it. And then Samit bows his head and he's just like, well, I have to tell you something. I'm married. Excuse me? Excuse me, Samit? Excuse You had us all fooled. You sat down there with your friends, cried over Jenny at some lunch table, and said that you love her and you cannot let her go and you are married? Guys, what did I tell y'all? I told y'all this dude went and got married. He was at his wedding ceremony when he disappeared on Jenny. Samit, you are basura. You had me fooled, bro. You had me fooled. Here is how he had me fooled. His friends, were they in on it too? 
Like, what the hell is going on? Because his friends sat down with him and was just like, oh, the family won't approve of it. But none of the friends said in their confessionals that Samit is already married. So something is going on here. Something is very fishy. I don't know if Samit and his friends were scamming again on TV. I don't know. Like, this just does not make any sense. Like, how is the family okay with it? How is this show going over in India where Samit is from? How does the wife feel watching this knowing that your man had a 63 year old side chick that you ain't know about like what is going on something is not right with this storyline guys it's not making sense because if Samit got married in those two weeks that he left Jenny when we met his friends they they had to have known that he was already engaged at this point. Why didn't anybody mention it? Because my mind, I'm thinking if you didn't mention it, it's because of storyline. Something ain't right. Something is not right. And then he's walking around in his neighborhood. No, he wasn't in his neighborhood. He was in the neighborhood that they moved to. Jenny called it. She said, he has me in this apartment like a mistress. He doesn't want me to leave the house. He doesn't want me to talk to anybody. Ma'am, you are an elderly side chick at your big age. You done got scammed by a 30 year old. Wow. I mean, men, men. <laughs> wow. I mean, men are out here playing women in their 60s. <laughs> There's no limit to how low men will go. I can't believe this. I just. I just, and guys, next week, I'm going to be a wreck because what I wanted to do, I wanted to, I would love to do a live, but I just, my equipment is not up to par. Not yet. It's coming. I believe God. But what I wanted to do is just review that episode right away because I just, I knew that I could not watch that episode and just not talk to you guys immediately. But when I watch the previews and Miss Jenny was falling out over Samit, First of all, I'm watching the show with my mom, who is now like a huge 90 Day Fiance fan. You're welcome. Um, when I was watching the trailer, we were watching the trailer together. We both started crying. Like it just broke our heart. The way she was crying. Guys, I know some of you said that you believe that Jenny knew that Samit was married. But guys, the way that woman was crying, I don't think she knew. I don't, she was like shaking and breaking down. She was distraught. I don't think she knew that that man was married. The plan is to do this review right after I watch this show or while I'm watching this show. But I feel like I'm gonna be an emotional wreck. An emotional wreck because you know they are going to leave that clip of Miss Jenny crying over Samit to the very end. Now, how can I do a comedic review of this show after Miss Jenny just had me crying like I was at a Black Baptist funeral? I don't know if I could do it, guys. I'ma try. I'ma try. But Miss Jenny, she got me. She got me. Samit, you trash. You trash, bro. You did not have to do that to that woman. She gave up everything. They discussed it. They planned it. And you put this on TV? What the hell is going on? Something ain't right. Something ain't right because if his family is so strict, if he's married, why didn't his friends say anything? And if you're so afraid of your family, how are you okay filming that you were cheating on your what or the woman that you were engaged to? Like, if this is an if this is an arranged marriage, doesn't that mess up the diary or something? Like, I don't know. Something ain't right here, guys. Something is not right. What I do know to be true is that Miss Jenny did not know that this man was married. I think Samit finally told her because he just couldn't lie anymore. There was nothing else that he could do. He couldn't string her along. I think he got Miss Jenny to come here to live in India with the intention of them getting married because I don't think she would have moved out here with a boyfriend. I think she wanted to be married. Also, she had to be married so that she can stay. I think that Samit did not ever have any intention of marrying her. I think he wanted to have his fun with his side chick and then when the visa was up, sent her home and live a mediocre wife with his new bride. That's exactly what he wanted to do. Wow. What? Miss Jenny didn't deserve that to me. Are you on Twitter? Because you know what? I think it's time to cyber bully. <laughs> No, don't cyber bully Samit. That's an ugly thing to do, but you know. If the spirit moves you. <laughs>
You know what I just thought about? Jenny's daughter-in-law is going to rock Samit's skull. She look like all she do is fight, Samit. You better not let that woman find you, because baby, you gonna get all of her hands. All of them. Now let's talk about Anime Avril Lavigne and Jihoon. Anime Avril Lavigne, girl, go home. Go home, because somebody in the comments section let me know that Jihoon's brother also lives in this Ikea display section. <laughs> because baby, I haven't seen a room yet. I have not seen a room yet. I'm like, this is literally an Ikea display section. <laughs> So it's five adults, a dog, a newborn baby, and just you wait because Hurricane Drusilla is on her way to Korea. This don't make no sense. This can't work. This cannot work. And the thing that shocks me is she's mad at Jihoon about all of this. She's mad at Jihoon about all of this. But she said in her confessional, I left everything at home for this man to move to Korea to be with Jihoon so that our family could be together. I had no idea how he makes money or where we're going to live. I just expected him to have all of those things prepared. So how is this his fault? You, a girl, because I've already talked about her, blaming everything on Jihoon, but you still had unprotected sex with this man. Jihoon is Jihoon. Jihoon is lazy. He's a lazy boy child. His mother has already said it. His father has already said it. He is just a lazy dude. But Devin, you had sex with him, unprotected sex with him. Then you decided to move to Korea. Did not know if he had money, how he made money. Did not know where you guys were going to live because you just assumed that you guys were going to have an apartment because this is what he said, but you didn't know any of this to be true. Sis, why didn't you just take a trip? I would have taken a trip when I found out that I was pregnant, it would have made perfect sense to me to go to Korea. After you guys have decided that Korea is where you want to live, why wouldn't you go there to check it out? To see if it's a good enough place for your child. You have already went there with the intentions of living there. You didn't know where you were going to live and you didn't know how this man was going to support you. But somehow it's still his fault. You don't take no responsibility for anything. Like everything is Jihoon's fault. It is, but she has to take some of the blame. Like you're sitting here in your confessionals, a mother of two, and you're talking about, I moved my family out here. I took my newborn baby to Korea, sold all my stuff, quit my job. I took my child here and I'm sending my other child out here, but I didn't know where I was going to live. And I didn't know if the man that I was going to marry and move in with could provide for me. Ma'am, that don't make no sense. That doesn't make, that's stupid. That is really stupid to move somewhere where you don't know where you're going to live or how you are going to survive. You just took you and your child there and plan on bringing your other kid there, but you ain't know how nothing was going to happen. That's stupid, sis. That don't make any sense. It's so idiotic. And she said it in her confessionals with no kind of apprehension or like any self-awareness. She was just saying it matter-of-factly and then blaming Jihoon. Girl, the delusion is real with anime Avril Lavigne. You know what? In my next place, I want a bidet because just like Jihoon, I want clean anal, okay? <laughs> you know that he knew what he was saying. Like, this is the thing. There's definitely a language barrier, but Jihoon knows. He knows when he's saying funny stuff. He really does. He's a fun guy he's a fun guy he's good tv but he is very immature and he is not prepared to take care of this family and, and to be quite honest with you neither one of them are prepared like we're just seeing this young couple just make the dumbest decisions and oh my goodness if when they get it together because i checked her instagram i think they're still together and there seems like there's some really it seems like there's some real love there it's just these two adults with children make decisions that you and I would make at like 19. They're making them being good and grown with children. And it's just hard to watch because you're like, how can you move your child here? And you didn't know where you were going to live or how you were going to survive. Did you think that you were just going to come to Korea and get on Korea public assistance? Do they even have that over there? Like, what did you think was going to happen? Girl, stop having unprotected sex until you get some common sense. Beautiful babies though. She makes some beautiful kids because uh, little Targaryen, 
He's so adorable. He's so adorable. Oh, with his little hair, his hairline starting back here. Oh, I just wanted to do, 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 do. so cute. So cute. This couple is going to work out because they both dumb as a box of rocks, but they love each other. They really, really do. I wish them well. I wish them both common sense though. Please, anime Avril Lavigne, take the checks. All the checks that you get from the show, you take them, you deposit them, you watch that bank account because Jihoon, you can't trust a scammer with a check because let's tell the truth and shame the devil, Jihoon is a scammer because he was trying to explain what he did to Devin and got him into the debt that he's in now. And I'm like, Jihoon, you keep on explaining around it instead of just saying flat out, I'm a scammer. That's what it is because Jihoon sits down and talks to Devin about his financial situation. Devin has been in Korea with uh, Lil Targaryen for about a day, I think. Jihoon finally decides to tell her why they're going to have to stay with his parents for a while because Jihoon the scammer said that he found phones and sold the found phones to people. But guys, let's tell the truth and shame the devil. Jihoon stole them phones. He stole the phones and he was selling the phones to people and the government caught him and locked him up. And the only way he was able to get out of prison or wherever he was at was because he had to pay a fine. If he did not pay that fine, he would still be locked up. And you know what? Devin, you probably wouldn't be pregnant, but we love little Targaryen. So we're glad that Jihoon got out of prison and is now paying his debts. But that is the issue that he had. He messed up his credit. He took out loans because he had to pay this fine back uh, to the police or the government or whatever and because he took so long paying it back he had interest on his fines and the fines doubled so instead of paying like fifteen thousand, he had to pay thirty thousand. but the good thing about it is he's getting the payments down like wherever he works he makes four thousand dollars and he's able to make payments or whatever to like pay everything down so that's the good thing about it but the thing about it is what kind of job can you get when your resume is scamming what can he possibly do? And Devin was good in her response, but I would have been pissed. And I would have went back home and packed up me and my baby and went back to America and live with my parents until I was able to get back on my feet. Sis, that's what you need to do. Jihoon is a scammer. Nobody's going to hire a scammer. Who's going to let a scammer work the register? Nobody. But one of y'all told me that he's a used car salesman in uh, Korea. And you know what? That's the perfect fit for him. That is a perfect fit for him. Car dealerships are the only place where you can legally scam and scheme. So Jihoon, you fit right in. And can we talk about how he left Devin to deal with the baby so that he could sleep with the dog? He made up some excuse that that silent dog was making noise. So he went to go uh, sleep with him on the couch so that he won't make noise and wake up the baby. I was like, Jihoon, you don't know what you're doing. He loves his child, but he don't know what he's doing. So when it gets rough for him, he leaves and let Devin take care of it. And Devin tried to address him, but you know. It's Devin. Karini and Paul. Nothing uh, comedic I can say about this, um, this couple, this episode, because it was beautiful. All of their scenes were just so heartfelt and got me right in the heart. Like Karini is sitting there in pain, like waiting for her doctors to get in because the doctors are like changing shifts. So there was a stretch of time where she was without medical care because the doctors and nurses were changing shifts. So she's sitting on this hospital bed just in so much pain. And Paul finally rose to the occasion. He was not stressing Karini out. He was just being a supportive husband. He really, really was. And when he started to cry because she was in pain and she was crying and there was nothing that he could do to stop it, he just put his head on her forehead and he just cried with her. I was just like, oh my goodness. Now I like this couple. Now I like this couple. And I, and I think that with Paul, which happens to a lot of parents, I think Paul in this moment when his child was born, I think he grew up, guys. I think he grew up because he was there for Karini. He was coaching her, he was massaging her. He was giving her words of affirmation. He was trying to do everything that he could do to make this process better for her. And she even recognized that. So there is some hope for this couple. There is some hope for this couple. And then we finally get to meet baby Pierre, who is just beautiful. Just a beautiful, guys, I was this, this episode had me crying a lot. I was crying with Miss Jenny watching that preview and then I was crying when Pierre was born because oh my goodness Karini was in so much pain and she was screaming and as soon as we saw that little white butt on Pierre she just started like she just started to like laugh with joy. It was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. Paul was crying. Her mother was crying and then they put little Pierre on her chest and she started kissing the baby. Oh. 
It was so beautiful. I was so happy for this couple. I was so happy for this couple, but I will say this. <laughs> Paul was like, there's no doubt that this is my baby because he's very white. And I said, Paul, have you seen that child's features? Because <laughs> Pierre is ethnic, okay? <laughs> Pierre got them full lips. I said, who he get them lips from? Because neither Paul nor Karini got them full lips. Karini, who that baby father? <laughs> Let me stop. I'm being messy. Congratulations, guys. You know, Pierre probably got them full lips from his great, 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 great grandmother from somewhere. Congrats, you all. Watching you, Karini. <laughs> Congrats. Congrats. You got a beautiful baby. And I, I think this child... It rarely happens, but I think this child saved this marriage. I hope Pierre's middle name is Jesus Christ because he came on in and saved this marriage. There is some hope for these guys now that Pierre is here. So let's talk about Miss Laura and Aladon. I, I have to consciously say his name in my mind because for some reason, my mouth wants to say Aladdin. So I always take a pause before I say his name because Aladdin is like on my lips, but I know it's Aladon. So Miss Laura and Aladon are preparing for this wedding. And guys, can we talk about what the hell is going on here? What the hell is going on here? Because you all informed me that Aladon lives in Qatar, right? One of the richest places in the world. I understand that, but he also lives in Qatar with a roommate, okay? So he's not taking on all of those expenses by himself he's splitting the majority of his expenses right so he could still be scamming miss laura for the money but i don't think so i don't think so because if he would have been asking this woman for money they would have filmed it we would have seen it they would have asked her about it we haven't seen that so it's not for the coin he's not coming at her for the coin so what is it i'm not saying that these two can't be in love i just don't see it I just do not see it. There's no chemistry between the two of them. So the only conclusion I can come to is that Aladon is scamming for fame. This is his way of getting on TV, on being like this popular celebrity. Like this is what he's going after. He's going after reality TV show fame. That has to be it. That has to be it. I can't think of any other scenario. I've been racking my brain because if it was love, I think we will see it. We don't see any love with them. We have this weird scene with Miss Laura after they go and get a lamb. <laughs> Can we just listen? Miss Laura was not turned on by Aladon getting a lamb for the wedding ceremony, but I was. The way he was like looking at that lamb and just like, this is what we're going to do. I don't know. It was so like masculine. I liked it. I was like, oh, yes. Get the lamb, baby. Get the lamb for the wedding ceremony. But after they get the lamb for the and he, and then he like picks up the lamb like it's nothing and puts it on a truck. But listen, that was hot for me, Miss Laura. I don't know why you were not turned on by that. But after they get the lamb, they sit down and for some reason, and that reason being the producers telling her to do this, Miss Laura starts talking to Aladon, who is visibly uncomfortable with this conversation. She starts talking to him about the sex toy that she has. She's using this sex toy on herself because they have not been having jiggy jiggy. So that alarmed me. I'm like, you guys are married. You've been here for a while. You're saying that you guys have not been having jiggy jiggy. And it could be because they're staying at his parents, but she was trying to, you know, force him to get a hotel room so that they can have sex. And he just was not into it. Now, maybe he wasn't into talking about it on camera. I don't know. But I don't think that he's attracted to her. I think she is very sexually attracted to Aladon. I don't think that there's anything more in this relationship than that. I think that this relationship is the same as Miss Angela and Michael. I think it's a sexual arrangement. I think Laura gets out of Aladine a young, firm, brown man that is sexing her like crazy or willing to sex her like crazy because that was the conversation that they had after their wedding ceremony. Listen, Miss Laura is a freak and she wants to do all kinds of things and Aladdin, damn it, Aladon has to be down. But, but in exchange, I think that Aladon gets this exposure. That's what it is for him. That's what I'm thinking, guys, because I'm thinking that this relationship will not last. I think they are probably going to drag it on for two 
or three seasons and then they're going to break up as soon as Aladon hits a million followers if he hasn't hit it already. As soon as his personal training business takes off and gets him into the place where he feels like he can really travel with this internationally. I think this show is a commercial for Aladon. That's what I think. And I think Miss Laura feels like she got a prize and she's ready to show it off to the world. But sis, I don't see it. I don't see it. What do you guys think? Do you think that this is the real deal or do you think that Aladon is scamming in some way? Let's talk about it guys because I, I still can't put my finger on it, but I know for sure that this is not a marriage based on love. Let's talk about it. So we end this episode with Miss Laura's son finally showing up to attend the wedding that is happening, I guess, two days from his arrival. He shows up dressed like Crocodile Dundee. Him and Aladon do not have the best interaction because Aladon is laughing and calls him a cowboy. He doesn't think that that's funny, but baby, you showed up dressed like Crocodile Dundee. What was he supposed to say? Listen, I am on Miss Laura's son's side. I just did not think that he should have disrespected Aladon. <laughs> Y'all know what I was gonna say. Aladon the way he did, because I felt like Aladon was being a perfect gentleman. He was happy to actually see him and really, you know, greeting him and trying to make him feel comfortable. And he asked him if he wants to go meet his family. And Miss Laura's son is just like, well, I'm tired, so um, I'll do it another time. And eventually he gets up to leave. And Aladon doesn't like that. He's just like, if you want to be disrespectful to me, I'm going to be disrespectful to you. I felt like Miss Laura should have made her son go meet his family because it is disrespectful. It really, really is disrespectful. It's disrespectful in America, dude. You know how we do over here. And it's really disrespectful to Aladon and his family where they live. Are they in Qatar? Morocco? You know, over there, right? Because it was because it was a huge offense to Aladon. He was not happy about it. I get that this young man is afraid for his mom because we get in next week's episode where he talks about how she continues to pick bad men that tear her down and he has to be there to pick his mother up and build her back up again. And he's tired. He's really, really tired. He's also very weary of Aladdin because he doesn't know what his intentions are with his mother. I understand, but he still should have spoken to Aladon's family. That's it for this episode. Um, I I did enjoy it. I'm not saying that it was a bad episode. It just started off so bleak for me with the Jenny is the meat storyline. I just felt bad. I still feel so bad for Miss Jenny. It's just not fair. It's not fair what that man did to her. Oh gosh. Whoo, that daughter-in-law is going to rock your skull, Samit. I hope you are ready. You're probably going to chip that other front tooth and you know what, Samit? You deserve it. So that's where this review ends. What did you guys think about this episode? Let us just know in the comments section below. And if you like what you see here, please like, comment, subscribe, and what? Share. Share this, guys. Let's get on the sharing train so that we can grow our little community and help your girl out. Thank you so much for stopping by, guys. I will see you next week for the following episode. Ugh, I'm about to cry now just thinking about it. Oh, for the following episode of Before the 90 Days, Miss Jenny deserves better. Oh, love you guys. Bye.